webinar for all right so uh welcome once again to a third thursday user webinar and i think this is the second one because of thanksgiving um but we do our you know user webinars monthly like everything they come by they come around a lot faster than you realize but we love doing them um we like to focus on a little bit about what we're working on, maybe a little tip or trick here or there. And then when you registered for the webinar, we asked if there was something specific that you were interested in. And we really got back two themes. A um, couple of the attendees uh, wanted to see a little bit more on our, our lab management solution, which is called Enterprise. And then, uh, couple others wanted to see 3D and bracket removal, so I'm going to go through those. To introduce myself, I'm Todd Blankenbeckler. I'm uh, president of EZRX. <clears throat> I also have Tom Zambito on the call. Tom is the lead developer and is really going to serve as a backup for me. Hey, Tom. And um, thanks for joining. We're going to try to do this, you know, <clears throat> 45 minutes or so. Um, so let's get started. And we all do a lot of webinars these days, so we're all pretty good with Zoom. But if you could mute your line until you want to speak. But if you have a question, you can either put it in the chat window or you can just ask it. There's, it's not a very large group, so it's fairly casual. So I, I want to start by uh, a little bit, maybe a tip and a trick. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then <clears throat> maybe a, uh, a little uh, feature that we're currently working on that uh, we've been asked a fair amount recently. So we wanted to go ahead and get it in there. But the first thing I wanted to point out, since uh, this is the lab user webinar, is one of the really dynamics of the business is we're often asked to add new parts to the universal library of parts and appliances. And we have about maybe around 700 parts and appliances in the library, but we get asked certainly weekly, some days it feels like daily or some weeks it feels like daily that we need to add <clears throat> a part to the library. And I think it's important for you to know that because as we add parts, parts are active on the lab part list by default. Whenever we roll out a new part to EZRX, a customer can send you a prescription for that part unless you choose to disable it. And as we roll out parts, we document <clears throat> parts in our What's New, which is under the knowledge base. Uh, we actually did a release that um, I need to update. We did a release last weekend that I need to put out there. But each time we put out a part, we list it in the what's new. So we just put out a Crozat appliance recently. <clears throat> uh, here's a soldered spur rest. Here's a Crozat crib. Here's a hybrid anchor with TPA. Here's a hybrid high rack with distal driver. Ripple Plus, Lingual Tube Attachment. So these are all parts that were recently added to EZRX. <clears throat> so as we release changes to EZRX, almost always a part goes out when we push out changes to the program. So just something that you want to keep an eye on. I'm going to log in as a lab now. And log in as a practice. I'm going to log out and I'm going to log in as lab. And you can go to configure parts to review the parts. And a couple things you can do just so you know that it's a way that you have this option. I'm under configure parts. There's a slider bar over here. Enable alternate part naming. And if that option is enabled, that enables this field. So you can give this 
a different name if you would like. Uh, and or if you don't do that part, you don't want it available in your library, you can mark it as inactive. And now your customers will not be able to suggest lingual apron as a part when they send you a prescription. The other thing you can do is if you go to category manager, this allows you to quickly review all of the categories. And if there are certain categories that you don't want available in your part, you can de deactivate an entire category. And then if you want to see the parts in that category, click parts and that'll show you all the parts in that category. So just a little tip, whenever we push out a release, check for the new parts. And um, if you need to hide those, you can give them a different name. You can even change the category if you would like um, as part of managing your parts list. So let's talk a little bit about something that we're working on because I'm pretty excited about this. So I'm actually gonna jump over on our QA server. So this is pretty early, but um, I wanted to go ahead and show it to you. Hopefully we have this out by the next webinar. And for those labs that are doing aligners, and many of you are probably doing aligners, um, we've had a set aligner prescription form. And that is, let me log in as a practice. No, I'll log in. This is fine. That is the fields that are available on the aligner prescription form are what are available. You can't add any custom fields. You can't add any special lookups or anything like that. So what we're working on now is the um, option to edit the fields that display on the aligner prescription form. So we have a new field that we're working on, custom aligner prescription field. And so you can add different drop downs, check boxes, radio buttons, where you can prompt the practice to fill in additional information to create a, a liner prescription that we don't normally have, uh, we don't normally capture when the practice is creating a prescription. So it looks like this. I'm gonna log out as practice, I mean lab, and I'm gonna log in as practice. And I'm gonna go create a prescription and in the interest of time, I'm just going to go edit an existing prescription. So let's say that I want to send an aligner prescription to the W lab. I'm going to click on the aligners tab. And right now, the aligner form allows you to specify the teeth to include in the aligner. You can allow attachments. You can allow IPR. You can define aligner types. This can be your product name. You can prompt for treatment goals today, crowding. And then now there's an area for custom aligner fields. And so as you set up aligner fields that are not currently available on the form, they're going to show as custom aligner fields. And you can see we've got different field types. You can also now, if you would like to, you can turn off, if you don't want to prompt for treatment goals, you can turn that off. You can turn off um, attachments and IPR. So we're going to give you some more flexibility in capturing the information you need from your practices to do an aligner case. You can also prompt for images now. So we now have the composite eight. And so you can ask that the practice include facial front, frontal smiling, and they can just put that into the frame here. They can attach all eight images. We can now attach x-rays right to the aligner prescription. And they can do this now by just uploading files to the prescription. So this interface is just a cleaner way for them to match up the image with the image type with the appropriate uh, link.
So we're working on the, the custom aligner prescription form, our fields. Um, hope to have that out by uh, the next user webinar. Um, I'm in still in QA now, so we're deep into testing as we speak. Okay, so let me jump back out. And I thought as part of this webinar, since we had a couple questions on just lab management and that workflow, I would start on the practice side and submit a case to the, oh, let me log out. I want to jump into a different server here. So I thought I would start on the practice side and then submit a case to a enterprise lab so you can see how that hangs together. So you guys probably have seen the practice side interface, but just to go through that. So I'm now logged in as a practice. I'm going to submit a case to a patient or for a patient. I'm going to do Tom Zambito. When do I want the case back? The, the doctor in the office and where to ship the case and where to submit the case. And because the W Ortho Lab is an enterprise lab, they're using our management product, the practice can also specify which office to bill. So if you have a situation where they have a main office and three satellites, but they want their invoices to always go to the satellite, then they can specify that here. Now I'm going to go create the prescription. And I'm going to put a Holly on this prescription. Hollies, as you know, have acrylic color. So I'm going to specify my acrylic color. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and use the iTero integration to attach the iTero scans. So this is a Holly prescription that's going to come to the W Ortho Lab. I'm going to go ahead and sign and submit that. And before I do that, I'm glad it prompted me on the date needed because you can do this now with a connected lab, but certainly if you're using the, the management product, you can enter your standard pricing. So as the practice is creating the prescription, they're going to see the standard price for all of the parts that they put on that prescription. And then I need to get my uh, date needed properly because the lab has a minimum turnaround time set up. So I'm going to sign and submit that. And so I've now submitted this case to the W lab. So let me log out as practice. And now I'm going to log in as lab. And let me show you the workflow now for a uh, lab enterprise. And then I'll finish by going through our 3D product. So here are all the cases that were submitted to the lab. And here's Tom's case. And so I'm going to check it in. And you'll see immediately one difference between, say, a connected or standard plan and enterprise is the, the check-in screen is different because we need more information for a management case. Optionally, you can specify production location. That's, a, that's available on all plans. When do you plan to ship the case? And then you can add additional options like 3D models, miscellaneous plaster item, items, et cetera. Um, this is a new case. And I'm going to now check in that prescription. And similar to your workflow, this case is now checked in. Or your workflow now for connected or standard lab. So now if you go back to the dashboard, uh, you can see Tom's uh, case has been checked in. I've got it at the lab for the production location. Now the practice sees that the case is checked in. The practice can no longer edit the case uh, because you are in control of the case now. So to continue the workflow, uh, let's say that you go make this Holly prescription. So now that you've checked it in, You've put it into workflow. And when you're finished with the, that part of the workflow, making the Holly, you can check out the case. So now the case is checked out. 
as part of the workflow. And if I go back to the dashboard, I'm going to see now checked out cases. So maybe your workflow is the lab is you accept the case by checking it in. And then when you put it in production, you check it out so you know that that case is in production. So this case could be somewhere between it's been checked in, but it's not yet finished. So now LabTech opens up the prescription. That's a different prescription. Um, where is that little guy go? Oh, there it is. Um, now you make the appliance and you're ready to ship the prescription. So I went to workflow, check out. Here are the cases that are checked in the are ready to be checked out. And now you're ready to generate the shipment for Tom Zambito. So now I'm going to click generate shipment. And one of the questions on the um, pre webinar questionnaire was the UPS integration. So this is how the UPS integration works. You click generate shipments that creates a file that can then be imported into UPS WorldShip. Now I don't have WorldShip running on my computer because we're not actively shipping, but at this point you would go over to WorldShip, open up WorldShip and you would bring in that file, which was generated when you click generate shipment. Uh, it's got all the information that UPS needs and that's gonna generate your shipment. So that workflow, I can't actually show it, but it, it's, it's really you know, pretty slick. Now that you've generated shipments and um, you're ready to ship the case, you can now generate the invoice for this prescription. So I'm going to generate the invoice. And so if you were using our lab enterprise solution, this would allow you to integrate UPS tracking into your workflow and invoice generation into your workflow, all from inside of EZRX. Now that I checked out the case, generated shipments, generated invoices, now I can go over to my invoices page. And here are all of the invoices for today. So you see the practice name, you see the office name, invoice number, has it been paid, and you see a total amount, and you can view that invoice. More importantly, you can edit that invoice. And so you could um, go through and adjust pricing. You can add additional line items and save that. Then you could go to the next invoice, review that, and save that. Then the next step would be you could select these two and you could export these two invoices that generates a CSV file with all of the data from those two invoices. And you can now open up QuickBooks we also integrate with Zero. Actually, we integrate with any accounting system that'll read in a CSV file. Obviously, the most common is uh, QuickBooks. Probably number two is Zero. But this file is now ready to be imported into QuickBooks or Zero, and you can do that on a day-to-day -day basis, or you can go over to the invoices page. Here are all of the invoices that have yet to be exported. You can go through and do click, click, click and choose to export the invoices. Or if you want to do all of these at one time, there's an option to export all unexported invoices. Again, before you do the export into QuickBooks or Xero, you can review and edit the invoices. And I'm going to go back to my dashboard. You can also hear all of my checked in cases. And let's say that uh, you go edit this prescription. And you make some changes to the prescription, right? You can 
from the edit of the prescription form, you can add line items to this and you would have predefined some of your line items. Um, you can just type in special item $25. You can also specify the item group or the item number in QuickBooks. And you can define these categories. You can also specify a discount from here. And then go back to that prescription. And you can see the price after I added in the special items. Now, if I go back to my dashboard, back to my checked in cases, I could view that. When you're viewing a case, you can also see the price breakout here. You can also add billing items while you're viewing the prescriptions. You don't actually have to go into the edit screen. Here's a breakdown of all the miscellaneous billing items that show. Uh, I'm gonna check that case out. I wanna make sure that I get it checked out properly. I'm gonna highlight that prescription ID. So I'm gonna check out that case. Here's that case that has been checked out. Generate the shipment, generate the invoice. Then I can go to the invoices page. Here are all of the invoices for today. I can uh, choose to export those. And you kind of get a sense of the workflow. The final thing that I'll show here is I'm gonna go back to workflow checkout and that is end of day. And many labs will uh, generate and ship, well, they'll, tell you, they'll invoice and then they'll ship maybe the next day. And so we have an interface called end of day where you can say, these are the cases that we've invoiced and now I wanna go through and mark these as shipped now that we've got them in the mail or picked up by UPS. So we have a process where you can easily go through after you've invoiced all of your cases and mark these cases and I get a bunch open because this is my demo account. They go through and mark these cases as shipped. All right, so that is, uh, you know, uh, it's not a, a very deep overview of, of enterprise, but I think you get the idea of kind of the workflow. So if you're interested in integrating shipping integration, UPS integration, uh, invoicing QuickBooks or Zero integration or any other accounting system to read, read in a CSV and all of that uh, inside of EZRX. Enterprise is an option. Before I jump back in or before I do 3D, from the practice side, I'm logging back in as a practice now. The practice, if you're using uh, the Lab Enterprise product, they can see all of their invoices inside of EZRX. So it's a really nice way for the practice to see all of your invoices. So they're gonna see that right inside of, um, of their EZRX account. All right, let me jump out of practice. I'm gonna jump back in as lab. And a couple of the questions, if we don't have any questions, a couple of the um, requests were to learn more about or to see EZRX 3D. So I'm back in as a lab. You know, maybe the workflow is uh, something like this. I'm logged in. Here's Robert Jones. Uh, I want to I check in this case. So I'm going to go through check in the case, I did it a few minutes ago. So the case is now checked in. So the practice knows that I'm working on this prescription. Now I'm gonna go down and hear all of the STLs that came over. I don't wanna do that file just yet. Let me close this. Then I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna open up this file in EZRX3D. 
So EZRX 3D, for those who are not familiar with it, it is our um, uh, CAD CAM solution that runs in a browser. It allows you to trim base and label models very quickly um, from any machine that you can get on the internet. So here is a, uh, we've all seen this file before, an open shell STL. And let's go through and base that. And it's really very simple. Number one, you orient the model. You always orient before you do anything. You want to do uh, molar, interior molar, if you're going to do the full arch trimming. And let's say that I want to do a horseshoe hollow model. I've got a couple options. Number one, I can use easy model trim. And I'm holding down the shift key and the left mouse button. And I'm drawing a trim path. around the model because I don't want to print all of that material. So I want to trim this model. So I'm using easy model trim to draw a trim path. And then I can click trim model and that's going to trim the model. This just, this will only take uh, a few seconds. And there's a nice little trimmed model. And from here I can go down and add a base type. But I'm going to click on adjust trim, which is going to put it back. And once you've trimmed a few models, you don't have to trim and then base the model. I can draw my trim path and I can go down and say, I'm going to do a base height of two millimeters. Uh, I'm going to do a hollow model, two millimeter base height and a wall thickness of two and a half millimeters. And to explain how the program determines base height. What it does is it looks for the lowest trim point, and that becomes the anchor to set the base height. And so in this example, all of my trim points are up fairly close to the uh, to surface, except I've got this point that's a little low. And so since this is the lowest trim point, it's going to become the point. The, the pointer. So the base height is going to be set two millimeters below that point. So if you want a really small base, you want to make sure that you scan around the model and you find the lowest trim point. Now, so I'm a little high over here. So I'm going to adjust these up. And then I'm going to click add base. And in one step, we're going to get the model trimmed and the base added to the model. And this will take 10 seconds or so, but it moves along pretty quick. So EasyRx3D, you know, we're not building a competitor to 3Shape or ExoCAD. So the program does not move teeth. It does remove brackets from teeth, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But it's for basing models and that involves removing brackets. So there's a nice little horseshoe hollow model. And then maybe you want to put a label on that model. So I'll put patient name. We support an engraved or embossed label. I have embossed selected. And then I'm going to go add an embossed label. And there's a nice little embossed label. Looking good, looking good. Now, some of our users will base their model in EasyRx because they find it fast and easy. And then they'll move EasyRx base models to another program like 3Shape to do a liner treatment planning, or to ULab to do a liner treatment planning. If you're going to do that, you're going to want to preserve the occlusion of the model. Uh, if you're just going to print directly from EZRX, like you're going to make a retainer, no need to preserve occlusion. But if you're going to move the model into another program, you do want to preserve occlusion, save the model, and boom, that goes back to EZRX. Now, let me close this. I want to open up that model again <clears throat> because I want to show a couple other features. So let me get this reopened.
And again, whenever you're going to work with a model, you're always orient. So let me orient this model. And let's say that I just want to do a horseshoe hollow model. Um, we've got a feature called Easy Base. When you click Easy Base, that adds in a horizontal cutting plane that you can adjust. So I'm going to drag that up. And you sort of look at it from both sides. Maybe I'm a little close. And then you can go down. I'll do a regular base this time, thinnest base height. And I'm going to chamfer this base, which is going to add a little 45 degree notch to the back of each uh, arch. And the chamfer is to allow you to easily pop the model off the build plate. So there's a very thin, pretty good job with an easy base, regular base model with a chamfered base. So you can pop it off the build plate. Now we're asked a good bit, what do the yellow squares mean? If you're going to put your label on the bottom of the model, uh, the yellow is that part of the model is really too thin to add a label. So you don't want to put a label there. So the yellow is uh, no label, please. So that is um, using easy base. I'm going to go back. And at any time before you save the model, you can undo your work. So I'm going to click undo and show you a vertical cutting plane at the same time. Maybe you want to print vertically. So you can adjust the vertical cutting plane. I clicked add vertical cutting plane. So now I've got a horizontal and vertical cutting plane because I like to print my model ver vertically. So I'm going to adjust that to where I want. And now I'm going to go back and add base. And then in one step, I probably should have ch unchecked chamfer, but we'll see what we get here. Uh, I'm going to uh, trim base and kind of vertically cut the back of the model. And there is a, a nice vertical cut model. One more thing, but before I move on to brag removal, because I had this question recently, I'm going to go back and do undo add base. And I want to um, take that off and take that off. I want to use easy model. Actually, I want to go back and totally start over. Let's see if I can make this work. And that is maybe I have a need to not print the entire arch. So maybe I want to do a three unit uh, arch for some reason. So I'm going to orient the model. But instead of doing the full arch, I'm going to pick the three teeth that I want to include. So we can segment. And now I'm going to pick easy model trim. And I'm going to draw my trim path like so. And so when I oriented the model, you'll see I kind of set this right there. Then I kind of built a triangle here to here. So I kind of built a triangle is what I did there. And then I'm going to go trim that. Now I could have pulled these trim points up a little higher. And now I've got a little three unit that I can add a base to. Let's see what this looks like. There you go. Even got a little chamfer on it. So if you have a need to uh, only print part of the model, you can segment um, the arch if you need to. Just have it all goes back to how you orient the model. Now let me close this. Because I want to show you uh, bracket removal because that question came up. Uh, and so let me open up this scan. And so this is a uh, scan with brackets on it. And we've seen a, a fairly significant increase in customers implementing our bracket removal solution. Uh, same day retainers are becoming a thing. 
or for you, you know, very short turnaround times are becoming a thing. Uh, so here's an, here is a, uh, an arch with brackets. Uh, and let me walk you through bracket removal. You always orient, since I'm going to remove all the brackets, I'm going to orient the entire arch. And it works like this. So here, uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, the first requirement for bracket removal is the wire must be removed before the patient is scanned. So no wire is a requirement. If you get a scan in with the wire, uh, you can kind of use our artifact removal tool, but it's a little clumsy. But for the most part, you don't want a wire. I'm going to choose select bracket. And I'm just holding down the shift key and left mouse button, and I'm drawing around the bracket. What's important is you don't want to touch any of the bracket pad or any of the bracket glue. And like that, the bracket has been removed. Let me go to the next one. So I'm kind of out and I'm going to remove that bracket. So the workflow is you just draw around <clears throat> the um, bracket to remove it. So this guy's approaching the soft tissue. So let me show you how that can work. Again, I'm drawing around the bracket. I'm going to remove that bracket and we get something like that. Now the margin you know, doesn't look great. And so we have some refinement tools. So we have build, carve, smooth margin, block out, and cut out. And I'm going to choose margin. I'm holding down the shift key. And I've kind of drawn in the margin. And then I'm going to go back and click smooth surface. And I'm going to smooth that. And now I've done the um, kind of got that where I want it. Now let's go do this tooth and I'm going to make a couple of mistakes here. So I'm going to go back to bracket removal, select brackets. I tend to work right to left drawing my drawing around the bracket. You can work left to right if you prefer. And I'm going to go up and just touch that bracket. So you can see what happens there. You can see I've got a little bit of a remnant. And so I'm going to go click carve. And I can do something like that. And then maybe I could do smooth. And I can do something like that. And maybe I want to do smooth on that. You have some size tools <clears throat> or you have control <clears throat> excuse me, of the size. <clears throat> so build adds material just so you can see what that looks like. So you can do something like that. And if I adjust this slider, I can get something like that. And if I make the depth bigger, I can get something like that. Same thing for smooth. We have a default setting, but you can make the size and the depth bigger simply by adjusting the evil sliders. And that's true for smooth, margin, block out, and cut out. So that is, you know, well, let me go back and do this. We've got a couple of minutes here. I'm going to go back and I'll do this one, this particular bracket. That was pretty. So again, I'm going to draw around. Don't touch the bracket pad. If you do, you can clean it up, but it's best if you don't. And then I'm going to click remove bracket. Then I can go back and do margin. Margin is not scientific, but you, you are experts. So it's a very good educated attempt to draw in the margin. So it looks something like that. So we're hearing, and there may be a brand removal customer on the um, 
call, uh, I don't know, five to seven minutes an arch. If you, if there's, it's a full arch with brackets on every tee. So an obvious enhancement to easy RX bracket removal would be, wouldn't it be great if we could just automatically remove the brackets? And so I'm going to go back to the patient's record. And you'll see there's another file on the prescription, EasyRx Optimize Bracket Removal. And so we've been working with a, a company developing some AI technology to develop automatic bracket removal. Well, I just got logged out. But I did. Let me jump in. Let me jump back in here. And so automatic bracket removal is what it implies. We're going to take the scan with brackets. When this file is uploaded, it's automatically scanned for brackets. If brackets are detected, then automatic bracket removal will automatically remove the scan. So this is a this scan where the brackets were automatically removed. And it does its best effort, right? It's not perfect, but this can save a significant amount of time because now all you have to really do is refine the two surface. Like that looks a little, oh, you always have to orient. So I'm orienting the model and now maybe I want to come and I want to smooth this surface a little bit. I can select uh, start refining and I could go through and maybe smooth that surface a little bit. Maybe I don't like that. Right. And maybe I want to draw in margin here. So I would go in and draw the margin in here and then maybe go back and smooth that. So the same thing right here. I'm going to go back to margin. Maybe draw that in and again, go back to the smooth. So you guys get the idea. So we've had automatic brag removal and kind of limited tests throughout the summer. We'd hope to have it out prior, but with COVID, we got thrown behind because we didn't do anything on it for about two months. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, but now we've got this in limited release now. So if you're interested in automatic bracket removal, um, you know, reach out to us. We can schedule a separate time to, um, to show you how it works and to talk the workflow and, and pricing. All right, so that's really all I wanted to show. I think I covered all of the questions that came in. They wanted to show submitting or see submitting a case, lab enterprise, integration with QuickBooks, um, kind of what we're working on. I know a couple had to drop. So with that, I'm going to uh, see if we uh, if we have any questions out there. I talked for a, a while. I guess we don't have any questions. If you have any questions, feel free to throw it in the chat or you can unmute and just ask it. All right, here we go. So the how question do send, is, how do you send it to, to your printer? Yeah, good question. Yeah. So let me jump back. Um, well, let me. Um, well, you would save the model. Maybe I let me see. I can base this real quick. A couple ways to send it to your printer. Um, we have an integration with Form, Sprint Ray, Envision Tech, MyCraft, 
and 3D systems. So if you're using one of those uh, printers, I don't know if this is going to base. Um, well, add the base, then you would save. In the interest of time, I'm going to jump sure. over here. Um, under EZRX 3D, there's a view STL print list. Let me see what integrations I have. Let me let me enable a couple of these integrations real quick. And just so you can get a sense, there's I'll enable form, Envision Tech, and Rayware. So we have a screen, three, view STL print list. And so here are all of the models that have been based in EZRX. And this just allows you a, a way to kind of keep track of which ones have you printed or not printed. And so the workflow, so here are the models. The workflow, you want to print these three printers, you do click, click, click. And if you have form, sprint ray, Envision Tech, and we support both uh, flavors of Envision Tech, Minecraft, 3D systems, and I don't have their software installed, but you click, let's say you have um, Envision Tech, you click, that's going to download these STLs, open up Envision 1, and pass in the STLs, and then you adjust the STLs on the bill plate. If you and have then, a different printer? Yeah, so if you have a different printer, we have a feature that will set up, this runs on PCs, this does not run on Macs, that we have a feature called EFS, okay. which we set up and it's a secure connection to your EZRX files, but it allows you to access those files outside of EZRX, mm -hmm. i.e. you would open up the printer software that you use for your 3D printer and you would browse just like they're local to your, and this is on the live site. So this looks like they're local to your computer, but these are actually your files saved at EZRX. And then you would open up the files through our secure file system that we call EFS. So you base an EZRX 3D, go to your 3D printer software, and open up the files through EFS. Okay, that works. That way you don't have to, you know, download them and all that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And then Tom chimed in with the pricing for uh, Jen. Um, let me jump over there real quick. Yeah, we're brand new to all of this. Okay. Can you hear me? Um, yep. We have a couple offices that use EZRX to um, send files and um, lab slips. Okay. Our daughter is now doing all of our digital side okay. and um, she's moving to California. So we think this is gonna be a great way for her to be able to do this all the way across country for us. Yeah. Um, if we can get everybody on board with EZRX. So how do we, you know, is it better to introduce it from the lab side or to get them to use it through an office? Like, what's the best way to pitch this to them? Yeah, and that's a little bit of a separate discussion, but, but kind of the short answer is um, for the lab, for you, you can, you can receive cases on our connected lab plan, which is for free. Right. Then if you want to use our 3D product, that's 99 a month. And that would work for your daughter, I think, who's going to be in Cali and you want them maybe to base files. And then enterprise is 299 But just to receive cases is free. And we can work with you on how to introduce it to your practices. One of those ways is you can create practices and you can invite them to start sending you cases. I'm looking for a lab that hasn't been invited. I mean, a practice. And if you invite a practice to send you cases, you can enable a feature where what we call pay for practice, okay. where you, you just pay per script for that practice to send you cases to you. Okay. So they don't have to sign up and pay monthly. They can just pay per script and you can pay that fee. It's $1.29 per script. $1.29. Yep. Okay. 
And then what happens naturally, and we have a lot of labs that invite practices to sign up to send them cases and they enable pay for practice. What happens is the practice will then uh, enjoy the benefits because the practices lose cases and they need EZRX. And they may need, they may choose to upgrade their plan to get additional features. You, uh -huh. wouldn't, pay, you wouldn't pay for that. You would just pay their per script fee. Okay. So we have a whole, we can work with you separately on how to introduce that to your practices. Okay, great. I'm trying to get as much info as possible. We have a really large practice that wants the quick turnaround time you were talking about with yeah. getting, um, the Essexes back. And um, they're texting me all of their lab slips. So we have lab slips with no scans and scans with no lab slips. And so it's getting crazy. So I think yeah. this. Yeah, no, we're going to we're going to be a great solution for them and for you in that situation. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's exactly why we were developed. So is it best for me to call and speak to someone over the phone to get everything? Yeah, I can have what, what's uh, if you don't mind sharing what your name and your which yeah. lab you're with, I can have your your territory rep contact you. Yeah, sure. Um, my name's Jennifer yep. Mat Matson. It's M-A-T-T-S-O-N. Okay. And it's A-M-O Lab. Okay. And the number here is 410-386-0270. Yep. Yep. And 410 is Maryland, is that right? Yes, uh-huh, Maryland, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you're, um, I'm going to have Thomas Williams give you a call. Okay. And Thomas can set you right up, answer all your questions and now it'd probably be better tomorrow because I'm getting ready to invoice and run all my shipping and UPS stuff, which is great too because we use UPS. So okay. I'm putting all that integrating and we have QuickBooks. So yeah. Perfect. All right. So probably tomorrow morning sometime would be okay. We'll do it. We open at seven. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions out there? All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. I really appreciate it. I hope you got it. Maybe a kernel or two of knowledge out of this. Uh, we do these every month, so you can join again next month. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a good day.